University of Common Sense Radio Show on none other than W E R E. 1490 AM. You can call us at 216-578-1490. You can text us at 216-804-7462. And for our millions of fans at www.newstalkcleveland.com. After what happened last week, for the past week, Michael Lars Lewinsky, uh, he's been wrapped up with his shoulder. And as for the professor, with his arm in a sling. He is not able to come in this week, but we're going to keep things going on the way it's supposed to be. Moving into the co-production chair, we have our co-producers for today's program, Pretty Brittany. We have Brother Ted Geary from the African American Museum. Uh, we have a nice little power pack show because, you know, our second hour, we have some information coming up about what's going on in Euclid, Ohio that's never been done before. But to start things off, I have like one of my troublemaking partners here. And before <laughs> we go to him, I just want to let everybody know that you can catch a lot of things broadcast from this program and many other news sources from Melanated Media News on YouTube.com as well as Facebook. So with that being said, anything that you wish to catch on the replay, you know where to find it. And I'm starting off because my brother in all of this, who's gotten into several problems with me on the front lines, we have Brother Don Bryant. How you doing, Don? I'm well, thank you, Al. All right, and along with you, uh, we have a guest, and that happens to be? Juan Arias. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. And one of the reasons why, and if you all have any questions before our first set of guests leave out, you can call in at 216-578-1490, but I'm going to start this off and say one of the reasons why we had to have this program is we always get to, like, the bottom of information. And to sum everything up, I've got to go into this and say right now, well, there are a lot of people who are saying that with the recent move that happened in the White House, what's the big deal? I mean, after all... Uh, DACA or the Dreamers, Dreamers Act, which came to pass. Uh, it's a lot of people taking our jobs. Um, there's a lot of crime going on with quote unquote uh, illegal aliens or people in the country. Uh, good riddance so we can get our jobs back. A lot of them aren't contributing to society, all that type of stuff. And to that, we'll start off with you, Don. What's your take on it? Well, you know, you hear a lot of negative. Uh a negative play uh, over the DREAM Act and over DACA. Uh, you know, that's, that's based on uh, misinformation, and a lot of times that's uh, racist tendencies showing through. So uh, the DREAM Act, which never passed Congress under Obama, which is why we, he developed DACA under a presidential order. So the DREAM Act is the Development Relief Education for Alien Minors Act, which would help the, uh, would give relief to undocumented children of immigrants that brought the children here uh, through no choice of their own. So these children have now grown in their college age, various ages. Uh, so when the DREAM Act did not pass the, uh, the dysfunctional Congress under President Obama, he developed the preferred, uh, he, de he developed DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which is really an ec economic stimulus package if you want to look at it because a study done by uh, University of California, Center for American Progress, United We Dream, and um, the National Immigration Law Center shows that DACA, DACA recipients contribute to the economy in big ways, earning higher wages, which means higher tax revenue and economic growth. And I can get into more detail on that, but we're talking billions of dollars, hundreds of billion dollars over 10 years that the DACA recipients would contribute if DACA re remained as a uh, as an option. Uh, since DACA has been denied, we are now going to uh, uh, morph into the Dream Act. Is what's, what we're asking. So if the Dream Act is enacted, it will mean billions of dollars for the U.S. economy. I feel you on that one and in listening to that. But I'm going to ask you, Juan. What has the I'll say what has DACA meant to you? It's meant a lot to me. Uh, if I can, I'll share my story real quick. Go ahead. I was brought here at the age of six. I had no knowledge that 
there was such a thing as being illegal or legal into a different country. Only thing I knew was that I was going to see my dad again, and I was coming here with my mom and my three-year-old sister at the time. I had no idea what was going on. As I grew up, I started understanding that what illegal and illegal was. But still, at the same time, it made very little sense to me. How could I have done a crime to come to a country illegally, but I did nothing wrong. I had no say in it. All I wanted to be was with my family, and my family wanted to keep us together. As I grew up, I went to school. I did everything that any other kid would. When I started going to middle school and in high school, I participated in sports, I did community service. I did everything I could to go to a higher education, go to college. But I knew I couldn't. And a lot of times that brought me down. It made me kind of want to quit in a way, but I also knew that I shouldn't just because I didn't have a piece of paper that said that I was a citizen. So I continued going to school, continued getting high grades. Most of my classes were AP, which is advanced placement, as well as honor roll classes. And I ended up graduating with a 3.6. I see, I would look at all my friends, apply for colleges, get accepted. And it hurt me inside because I knew that some of those colleges I would have loved to attend it, but I had no way to get into them. After graduating high school, I attended Lakeland, which gives you a chance to a, a, any undocumented student to attend, but you had to pay out of state tuition. And just for an idea, if you pay in-state tuition, you're paying about $300 for a class. Out-of-state tuition, I was paying about 800 for that one class for one semester. Mm -hmm. So just going part-time for two classes, I was paying over $1,000. After a while, that became hard because I couldn't afford to do that. So I dropped out of college, started working, and I found a job which didn't check my documents. So... Even then, no matter how good of a worker I was, it stopped me from really working because I couldn't move up in the scale because of my documents again. So in 2012, when DACA was approved by President Obama, I was able to go back to school because now we didn't qualify for financial aid or grants or loans, but it made it easier because we could pay in-state tuition, which made it cheaper, still hard, but cheaper. And I was able to get a better job because, thanks to DACA, I, was, I had a Social Security now and could actually apply for bigger jobs. So now that DACA is being taken away from me, it's, it's going to be hard for me. I'm a semester away from getting my career, which I want to be a firefighter. Uh, my job will be out of jeopardy because who knows if my job will keep me at the DACA or what I will do for money anymore. So it just it makes it hard because to me... I have always been an American citizen inside because even though I wasn't born here, if you would send me back to my quote-unquote home country, I would not know what to do. I would not know where to go, what streets to walk in, who to even look up to. I know the language there, but as far as, and I know where I come from, what state I was born in, but as far as anything else, I don't know anything. Now that I don't know their history, my schools up here, my friends, my family. A lot of people call us criminals. We're not criminals. We are just like anyone else. We're just looking for an opportunity at life as any other American. Because to us, that's what we are. And so th that's very important that you qualify yourself and see yourself as American, an American citizen, because of what you know. And then uh, before I even go to the phone lines, I hit back to... Uh, Don Bryant also because it's very interesting that what 91% working and contributing to our economy uh, as well as the fact that it's a pathway to citizenship because people don't realize that under this program they are not receiving quote unquote no welfare none of that they are basically contributing in this country and that's why if it was taken away it's estimated and I can see why there was certain changes a little bit in the White House after that that you're looking at possibly losing 400 plus billion dollars within a 10-year period from quote-unquote a administration who said they're all about 
adding money into the economy. So before we go to the phone lines, if you could like run off maybe one or two of the myths. Certainly. I, did, I failed to mention that the DREAM Act was a uh, bipartisan creation, uh, Republican and Democrat, under Orrin Hatch and uh, Richard Durbin, both uh, senators. So uh, uh, Jeff Sessions, the uh, Attorney General, brought the news to us a couple weeks ago at the end of DACA, and he said that, uh, it, that DACA increased the number of illegal immigrants coming into the country. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Actually, it's not true at all. Uh, for one, it misrepresents who is eligible for deportation or to stay under the program. DACA only applies to immigrants who entered before their 16th birthdays and who have lived in the country continuously since June 2007. So people entering now would not, uh, would not uh, apply, could not, could not apply. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, the year that President uh, Obama announced DACA, <coughs> sorry, uh, entirely uh, the months the months uh, before was when <coughs> many uh, immigrants had come into the country uh, years before. In fact, we we have never returned to the pre-recession levels of people coming into the country back in the 2000s. So it's it's declined ever since. <coughs> Excuse me. You. Other other uh, things that Jeff Sessions says was DACA uh, takes jobs from from U.S. Americans. Uh, again, this is not true either. Uh, it assumes that we have a a basic fixed number of jobs in the country, and if this was true, <coughs> between 1970 and 2017, the U.S. labor force doubled, rather than ending up. With 50% unemployment rate, the U.S. employment doubled okay. as well. <coughs> uh, DACA also does not take anything from taxpayers. Uh, as Al was mentioning earlier, uh, DACA recipients contribute more on average to the tax base. For one reason, they can't, re they can't take any benefits, such right. as uh, welfare, cash assistance, food stamps, Medicaid, health care, tax credits, or anything else. And, as I said earlier, it's a stimulus to the economy when you have uh, 800,000 folks, these are the dreamers, uh, two-thirds of them have purchased cars, and 16% have bought homes, which increases the tax base as well. All right, I can appreciate that. And before I turn things over to, of course, like co-producers and see what might be on their mind, and even Brother Sam from Melanated Media News, I am going to at least start off with a couple of phone callers. You're on our lines at 216-578-1490. What's going on with you and how you doing out there? You're on live. How are you? Hello? Yes, we're here. Hi, I was trying to tell Dr. Art, hello, this is Deidre. Uh, okay? okay? I haven't spoke with him in a couple of weeks. You know something? I'm what? going to let Dr. Art know that because right now he definitely needs a doctor himself. After that arm wrestling match last week, he was unable to be here. His arm's in a sling. Oh, really? Really. So, uh. But I'm going to do my best so that he can... Get in touch with you so he can have some tender love and care because he yes, needs it. Yes, tell him Deidre called him and let, let him and everybody know that I love them. Thank you so <laughs> Even much. Even you. I appreciate that very much. I can <laughs> use right. that. And thank you as always, You're Deidre. welcome. Bye. Bye. All right. And who's on the line? Who do we have? <laughs> Hello? Yes. <laughs> This is Kathy Ray Cohen. I was, <laughs> I'm glad you and Arda loved uh, uh, Al. Uh, Thank you. This is Kathy of Cleveland Urban News and Imperial Women. Right, right. Let me say this is a great show. I love these substantive kinds of shows that deal with, pu deal with public policy. There is some undercurrent with the black community and immigrants in terms of legal immigrants that they believe get more resources when they come to the United States. But beyond that, and I don't necessarily uh, believe that we should be a closed state, 
But what Mr. Trump is doing to these young people is terrible. And it just seems so prejudicial. And let me say thank you to Don Bryant and the Greater Cleveland Immigrant Support Network. We support DACA. And it's a, it's terrible how we're going back so many years in terms. It just seems so unconstitutional to do that to those children. But let me add before I hang up, Al, some news. Okay. Uh, Judge Capers event memorial the 25th go to efboy.com it's at six o'clock at holy trinity church that's cleveland urban news secondly you know we do plan a picket of judge charles Patton in the cleveland municipal court for denying indigent blacks counsel and allegedly harassing them when they file an affidavit of prejudice seeking his removal from the case you're with us on that right yes i definitely am and and then finally, let me say to the young man there to keep up the struggle. And we have to stay in the streets and this nonviolent movement to deal to what they're doing to us and what they're doing to our children. Okay, and have a good day, and thank you, Al. You can reach us at clevelandurbannews.com, 216-659-0473. Thank you so much for Alrighty. that call. Uh, it's beautiful to hear from Ohio's largest independent paper news source and who's on the phone line with us right now this is amazed i was calling in reference to uh, to speak with your guests whom you have on the air in reference to uh dagger but i you know i i want this country and everyone that's under the sound of my voice at this mo moment speaking on the air we all are immigrants. We was brought here, I'm speaking of people of color, we was brought here against our will, and we help mold and, and uh, build this country because we took this land from the Indians. And so when we try to drive these norms and, 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 and this saying that, other people are coming here, they are illegal, and, and they are taking our jobs. They're not taking anything. Uh, they are getting out there working, and if, if they are deported back to uh, Cuba, or, I mean, not Cuba, but back to uh, uh, wherever they came from, I'll just put it that way, right, right. We, will, we suddenly will experience the 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 uh, the uh, what am I looking for? We will suddenly experience the impact of them being deported back to wherever they came from because of the fact it's going to have a, a devastating effect on the economy, and because black people are not getting out there uh, uh, gathering fruit and. And, and all this other stuff that we uh, that we eat every day, uh, what have you, prepare. They, we have the foreigners coming in here doing those jobs. We done it when we didn't have a have a a, 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 a stake in the matter. When we was like slaves, we did all of what they are, some of the, them are doing today. And so, therefore, we some whatever have arrived. They said, "Well, I'm not doing all that stuff anymore." Picking cotton, gathering fruit, and all of this other stuff, and not being paid. And so, I, I just adamant oppose what uh, Donald Trump is doing in session. They, it's, to me, it's, it's prejudice, and that is what we need to call it what it is. Thank you so much for that phone call, former Councilman O'Mays and a fighter for East Cleveland. Thank you very much. And we have someone else on. This is our hot phone line right now. So I'm going to go and ask who's on the phone line right now. What's your thoughts? You have thoughts on the matter? Let Hello? Up. Oh, okay. Well, did you call with anything else that you wanted well, to? Well, it, it, this is talk on the matter for that girl. Okay. Okay. And talk to me, please. You know, I really can't hear you, so 
You can't hear us? No, I can hear you now. Okay, that's good. I might not have been close enough to the microphone, but what's on your mind? Oh, well, you know what I would like to say? They keep talking about doc and undocumented um, people that are coming here, uh, the Hispanics. But what I would like to make reference to, from 2004 to 2008, you have 65,000 manufacturing uh, companies to either close or leave the United States for cheaper wages and no OSHA laws. Okay, and then again, now you have the right to work states, mm -hmm. and then you have the infamous robots that are taking jobs every day. So what jobs are black Americans talking about, someone taking from them? I'd like to know. I thank you very much because that's a brutally honest, I'll say, assessment, and I thank you so much for adding that part to the conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. No. Thank you so much, and we appreciate the people who do take part in this because this show, the professor has always said, is to bring out issues for the people. And with that being said, I'm going to go and start with you, Juan. Did you expect to see the different levels of support or maybe the questions that came through with all of this since this, you know, came up and started? What are your feelings right now? It, it was surprising. Um, we had a rally last Wednesday in which we saw the community get together. It was surprising to see how many people support us. As me growing up again, most of my friends are white Americans and black African Americans. And when I shared my story, I originally shared it on Facebook. And they read it, and I got some negative stuff and a lot of positive stuff as well. My friends came to me like, dude, we, we never would have known if you never shared this with us. Why is it that you never told us? Why? What can we do to help, et cetera, et cetera? My thing to me, you know, I sat back and I thought about it. I'm like, why is it that they never figured? What, what did they think I was a citizen? And to me, I think it's because of the way I carried myself. And not just me, but there's a lot of us that carry themselves the same way where we don't give them an idea that we're undocumented. I carry myself in a way, and I live my life in a way as if I was a citizen. I gave them no doubts. And to think that, hey, this guy might be undocumented, no, I carry myself as a citizen because to me that's what I feel like I should be and what I am. I, was, I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. So to see people, for example, my friends saying, hey, what can I do to help you, means a lot to me because they're not just like, oh, well, apply for citizenship like some people are saying. They're like, what can we do to help you? We know you our whole life. We know you deserve to be here. What can we do? I hear you, and... Before I even do anything else, I'm going to turn the mics over to see if there's anything that any of our esteemed roundtable would like to add or ask. Well, I'll say this, and this is just my opinion. You know, Donald Trump, I'm not going to throw shade, but I'm going to just say this. It's like he's talking about make America great again. And I guess this is a part of his make America great again plan, which is kind of irritating. But... I just feel like when has this country ever been great? I mean, with, you know, the racism and the wars and things of that nature, I just feel like when has this ever been a great country? I'm not trying to say that everyone's bad in this country, but I just feel like at what point was this country just so great? So that's just my opinion on that, and I just hope that everything works out for you. I really do. Okay. I got a question. I um, Well, I'm, I'm going to make a statement first. This is Sam from Melanated Media News. I was at the rally you spoke of Wednesday. I interviewed everyone that uh, spoke. I interviewed a dreamer for 40 minutes. I got a real... It was really mind-blowing. And um, one of the myths that I think should be mentioned is that, and we, we talked about this in the interview, was... Everyone is not from Mexico that is DACA. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just immigrants. It doesn't say people just from Mexico. So how does that stigma, do you feel like it's a stain or something on you or anything like that? I feel like a lot of people think it's just people from Mexico. For, we're right so close. We're right down the border where they don't think about there's people from even South America, there's 
Indians. There's a whole Muslims. There's a whole different. An immigrant is not just a Mexican person. It's mm -hmm. anyone that's coming to a country that's not theirs is what an immigrant is. And like going back to her, she's saying Trump's bringing in that we're coming in and we're um, criminals, rapists, and all that. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. We go through a very strict background check. Mm -hmm. All of DACA, we go through. We ha we can't have any felonies. We can't have anything on our record. We mm -hmm. basically have to be clean, or else you don't get accepted. So for him to say that we're criminals and all that, that's not true. We all, no matter the race, color, of what, we all have our bad and good people. So it's not that's him more of just judging us without knowing us. Okay, so when I spoke with this person in the interview, there was a lot of, it, it just makes you think of back when we were in high school or in school, and it made me think like, wow, maybe was this person, and it, what I'm referring to is she was saying that they couldn't really speak about it. They couldn't, it was like a unwritten thing where you can't really talk about it and different things like that. Can you just give us an an example of what that was like growing up for you? It's scary. It definitely is. Like, even now, today, to this day, or even when I share my story at first, I was scared because I didn't know what I would get in response. I didn't know what people, how they would react. They would give me negative stuff. They, they said even... speakers didn't show up because they were scared at mm -hmm. that event. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of threats saying, like, oh, we're going to call the police, we're going to call ICE, they're all going to be there. But, you know, to me, it's we all have our story. Everyone has a different story of reason to why they came here, why they were brought here. My story might be different to the next streamer. And I feel like if every dreamer is to share their story, maybe it will help us encourage more supporters. Because rather my story didn't encourage one person, maybe someone else's story could hit them harder than mine did and to the point where it might change their minds. But it's it's scary to share it at first because you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know if your neighbor might look at you differently or maybe even your best friend. You don't know if they're gonna judge you or what might happen afterwards. Okay. And lastly, what do you feel that you're getting more support or more backlash? Because I'm gonna be honest, I put out several of the videos and I got a lot of backlash, specifically from the black community. And as a black person, that made me feel some kind of way. Now, I feel as if, you know, a lot of the comments were saying that there is a gap between the black community and the immigrants and, you know, different things like that, even though we have a common struggle. And... While that is true, and this, this, I feel like I want you to voice your opinion and what we can do to bridge that gap. Like you said, it's it's a common struggle, and I feel like backlash towards our topic is wrong because we're we're better off together. If we're both going through the same stuff, no matter the race no matter the where you come from, if we're going through the same stuff and we're going through the same struggle, I'm pretty sure together we can make something work instead of separate it. Because like you said, if African Americans are going through one thing to where immigrants are going to another, if we voice our stuff together, then we can get through Trump or anyone in the government stronger than we would individually. All right, and as we get ready to wind things down, we're going to go to our phone lines um, how you doing out there? You're on live. What are your thoughts? Yes, uh, I'd like to uh, ask your guest. Uh, he said something about he was born in the United States. Now, he's a Mexican, right? Now, is he biracial as far as when you talk about the culture? Oh, she's asking, what is your... Oh, yeah, I'm Mexican. Okay. Oh, I thought I was on radio. You are. That you came in live and clear. Uh, you might have been listening to yourself um, in the background, oh, but there's I'm... a delay. But we just heard you, and he answered. And thank you for calling. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
And now, Lord, please let the Browns win at least two games this year. And if LeBron leaves Cleveland, may he break his ankle on the offseason. Oh, sorry, poor. I was in the middle of my prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Tony? How you doing, so man? <laughs> How are you? How's the Al Porter show doing? I uh, love you. Uh, the Al Porter show is doing quite well. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Mr. Flashpoint? Flashpoint is doing great. Thank you very much. You can hear me live every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Restaurant Review Guy. But real quick, I want to talk about, is it your girl? Is it Brittany? Is that her name? Yes, yes. yes. Brittany, so I want to dispute you on the fact that you had said, when was America ever great? Post-World War II. When we had, first of all, less population in, in the United States. Okay, we have what, uh, 350 million now. Mm-hmm. There was, let's say, you know, 300 million, whatever it was, 200 million. The fact was, you were able to get a job in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and you got a great occupation, whether it be working for Ford or Chrysler or GM or Caterpillar, and you made a great wage without having a college education. Now, unfortunately, and I am a grad, I have a business degree. Fortunately, I own two businesses, but it's not as easy as it was years ago where now you're getting college grads and they can't find a job, Mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate. So, And I agree with your point, but... We did have a great country. We also didn't have crime. You were able to keep your front door open, your back door open, your vehicle open. You didn't have alarms in your vehicles or your home or your house or your businesses, your retail stores. That's the difference. Thank you very much for calling in. As always, you with guys, your opinion. Thank uh, you again, Sasha. No problem. Oh, no problem. So this is one of the things that I can do. Um, I want to go to the text line coming out of the 314 area code in the house from St. John, Missouri, Electricity Guru. So, hey, I'm glad that you're still tuning in, praying for that situation in that area of Missouri as well. And before I do anything else, I'm going to ask first you, Brother Don, two to three minutes, what would be your end-all thing that you would like to say? In response to the last caller, Uh, There was a great sucking sound that occurred in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s when about 1% of the population, those trillionaires, took a lot of bailouts and a lot of money out of the middle class, thereby evaporating most of the middle class. And those are the good old days that you're talking about. Uh, the, the, The good strong days of the unions are past, but we want to bring them back. So unions need to be developed. Back on our subject for today, uh... One last uh, myth that I wanted to bring up, it was said that DACA repeal is all about politics. Well, guess what? It's really about the law. These DACA recipients haven't broken a single law, and there's no reason to consider deportation or ending the program. Uh, if If we do it to them, who's next? I hear you. I hear you. And I'm going to at least ask you the same thing. You've got a couple of minutes uh, what would you like to end off with? I just want to, I hope that sharing my story and anyone of this has shared their story can bring people's, open people's eyes and see what's wrong with it. And if you still don't support us after hearing us, just take a look around you. Look to your left, look to your right. Look at everything you own. Look at your family, your kids, your wife, uh, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, whoever. And imagine you get taken away from them for doing nothing wrong. Because if you can experience that feeling, then you see what us dreamers are experiencing. We're experiencing a fear of just losing absolutely everything that we have worked up, worked hard for and in a land that we know no other. I hear you. Uh, before we do go on break, you were able to get in early enough. You're on live right now. What is it you'd like to say? Hey, one thing I can say, when certain things are said, somebody might have been planning on saying something and they heard an answer Mm -hmm. that really 
cause them to stop and think for themselves. So with that being said, I just want to thank each one of you all for being here. And Paul, I mean Juan, sorry. Uh, just for the people that are supporting us, mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage us, you guys to follow us on uh, All Our Higher Dreamers on our Facebook page. We can update you guys on what meetings we're having or what rallies or just any questions you might even have. We can help answer them for you. Thank you very much. At this time, what we'll do is we'll take a short break, and then coming up soon, we're going to hear about some exciting things that will be happening in the Euclid, Ohio area that will affect the whole region. Be right back after this. This is Marcella Boycott.